Back-to-back -back races brings us this weekend to Austria, and it is time for us to talk about upgrades. Spain was a highly competitive weekend. Red Bull definitely have lost the competitive edge they had over rival teams. McLaren and Norris were in the hunt for the race win again, and Mercedes have made sustainable gains to be third fastest, while Ferrari also took minuscule steps to the front. To continue with this upwards trajectory for most, many teams are bringing upgrades, and I'll detail you all the information regarding these setup rate packages, right from Red Bull and Mercedes down to Aston Martin and Kick Sauber. So don't go anywhere. Let's start with the smallest upgrade packages and work our way to the biggest upgrades, starting with the Sauber upgrades. This team is way behind both in terms of car performance and the team's overall performance. Sauber are yet to score a point this season, and more often than not, the C44 car has been the slowest out of all 10 teams. Compounding on that is the pit stop issue the team has. While this has been improved drastically over the past couple of races, the problem still does exist with the odd delayed pit stop occurring. Focusing on the car, the team brought an updated rear wing to Spain, but the C44 still struggled with both balance issues and tyre degradation. To work on these two segments, Sauber have upgrades lined up for Austria. Exact upgrades are not yet confirmed, but both the team and Bottas did confirm at Barcelona that the team has certain upgrades in the pipeline for Austria. Haas is also rumoured to be bringing some upgrades, exacts not confirmed as of yet, but the team is eyeing Austria to be an upgrade destination bearing fruits of an improved aerodynamics division. The 2024 car has been good in single lap pace, but struggles during the race, so upgrades reportedly are focused on improving the car's race management. Alpine are also expected to arrive at Austria with upgrades, new parts focused on weight saving. Other than that, they won't have any new aero influences coming in. Next, let's take a look at the medium-sized upgrade package of Aston Martin. Aston Martin endured a disaster class at Spain as Alpine outpaced them at Barcelona. The AMR24 on average is a great car in single lap pace, but the race pace is significantly damaging as the Aston car suffers from severe tyre degradation, specifically around the rear tyres. Since completing its first upgrade package at Imola, the Silverstone team has been able to improve the car's overall balance and gain straight line efficiency. The AMR24 still lacks raw downforce to gain pace around corners while suffering from high degradation. The high deg speed Barcelona circuit exposed these weaknesses a lot, and the Austrian circuit will also do the same. So to work on this, the Silverstone based team will be bringing upgrades to Austria, specifically around the car's floor edge and floor fences to rework load conditions to improve downforce generation. Red Bull are also bringing upgrades to Austria, and these reportedly are fast-tracked parts from its Silverstone package. Spain was another two-sided weekend for Red Bull. The team introduced significant upgrades at Barcelona, making changes to its side pods engine cover floor and beam wing. Even with those upgrades, the RB20 was only fractionally faster, with Verstappen winning a hard-fought race while Sergio Perez finished P8. The RB20, even in the hands of Max, was not the fastest car around the Catalonia circuit, but it was a talented drive from Max and good teamwork strategy which earned them the victory. The RB20 was just fractions faster than McLaren during the entire Grand Prix, and this is now a recurring result, depicting that Red Bull have lost the pace advantage it had over rival teams. So to make life comfortable for themselves again, the team is fast-tracking a front-wing upgrade to Austria. This is said to work in unison with the changes that has been made to the floor at Barcelona, smoothing airflow towards the car's rear, improving aerodynamic performance. As for Austria's prospects, Red Bull are expected to perform well here. Long straights combined with medium to high speed corners requires a balanced compromise, which is one of the RB20's strong suits. So most likely they are the team to beat here. Next, let's talk about Mercedes upgrades. The Silver Arrows are bringing more upgrades to Austria following the competitive performance they laid out back at Barcelona. Spain was the big test for the upgraded W15, and the car did handsomely pass it, outpacing the Ferraris to some surprise. Looking back at Barcelona, the W15 was strong through all corner profiles, specifically through the high-speed turns 13 and 14, showcasing that Mercedes have really gotten on top of previous deficiencies. Topping that off, Lewis Hamilton executed a soft, medium, soft race strategy using two used soft tyres exhibiting good tyre degradation. 
So the W15 definitely is taking a step forwards and the Brackley outfit are hoping to close the gap down to leaders McLaren and Red Bull with further upgrades at Austria and Silverstone. For Austria, Mercedes are expected to debut an upgraded diffuser specification, aiming at improving rear load generation while making minimal efficiency sacrifices. Looking into Mercedes Austria prospects, the Austrian track layout could prove a challenge to the W15. Mercedes car has shown good sustainable performance across Barcelona's varying corners, and time after time Mercedes have hit the ground running better than most other teams, which will prove handy at Austria with the sprint format in play. Next, let's talk about McLaren's upgrades. The Woking team has not brought any upgrades since they introduced that big package back at Miami. And since Miami, on the whole, the MCL38 has been one of the strongest cars on the track. Lando Norris should have won the Spanish Grand Prix, but as he said, by his own doing, referring to his poor start, only he lost that opportunity, eventually finishing two seconds behind Max Verstappen. McLaren have made exceptional consistent progress since Miami, and to complement that progress, Andrea Stella at Canada revealed that his team has upgrades lined up for the entire triple header, making progress continuously. Stella mentioned that they're not expecting to make huge changes with these upgrades visibly. It will be minor parts, but maybe they play a huge role from an aerodynamic standpoint. The upgraded McLaren has been good in slow, medium and high speed corners. The car has great aero efficiency, proven by good top speeds. There aren't any particular weaknesses in this McLaren to cure, rather than its peakiness maybe. So the team's only got to do one thing, and that is to add usable downforce. Adding usable downforce is a sustainable way of getting rid of that peakiness, as the car's operating window will be enlarged by more downforce. But a little peakiness, being on the knife edge a little will sometime provide that performance edge, proven by Verstappen numerous times. But it's driver preference, so we will have to see where McLaren go with developments. As for the team's prospects at Austria, the circuit requires a compromise between straight line speed and downforce, one the MCL38 achieves brilliantly. So I expect McLaren to be right up there, and I expect Lando Norris to be the favourite for victory at Austria this week, considering his performance at Barcelona last week. Touching briefly on Ferrari, the Scuderia have no upgrades lined up for Austria, but they did introduce a new medium to high downforce rear wing, a new beam wing, revised side pods with enhanced undercut alongside small revisions being made to the floor fences and tunnel inlets. These were huge upgrades, yet both Ferrari drivers finished behind the Mercedes cars. Fred Vasseur mentioned that the upgrades have not been fully optimised yet, and that to be a prime factor behind Ferrari's weak showing, but he expects Ferrari to perform better at Austria, but he pointed out that the Austrian circuit might not be Ferrari's strongest this season. Racing Bulls turned up to Barcelona with a near B-spec upgrade which was rumoured to be worth two tenths a lap. But the race card from Barcelona suggests otherwise as RB seemingly have taken a U-turn in terms of performance, with neither Yuki or Daniel being able to get out of Q1 and neither scoring a single point. This is worrying signs for the sister team, but hopefully they perform better at Austria. So with all these upgrades, are you excited for the Austrian Grand Prix? We are very much into your thoughts and perspectives in the comments section down below. And on your way down, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get notified of our future uploads, to keep yourselves up to date about the 2024 Formula 1 season.